time for Hot Topic. No, I'm not crying, I'm just a little misty. <laughs> well, no, it's spring break, and so in our town it's spring break, and um, so our son is here, cause you know, when he breaks, that means come and do the business. Do something around here, make it happen. <laughs> Help us. So, so um, he led the prayer while I was standing with this before they say, and here's Wendy. And sometimes some of the things that kids say, I'm like, who are you, Reverend Ike? <laughs> like, you know, I got, a, I got misty. I got Misty. So, yeah, shout out to my son. He's a fun young man. Sometimes that it is. Uh, all right, so we woke up this morning, we found out DMX was sentenced to one year in prison. Now, we here at Hot Topics thought that the sentencing was gonna happen either Wednesday or Thursday, either Wednesday or Thursday. So we went to some of the um, um, publications like Time and, and uh, the New York Times and you know some of the, I don't wanna say more official publications, but for lack of a better word, more official publications. <laughs> Only to find out the tabloids had it correct all along. He was sentenced yesterday. All right, so here's the deal. That's a good 47, right? Good. He was, he, was, he was supposed to be going in for five years, but he only got a year, one year, and the sentence will also include three years of supervised release. Is that the more classy way of saying parole? What, is that, what does that mean, a supervised release? And he also has to pay back the $2.2 million that he owes to uh, the government in back taxes. Do you remember when I was telling you that there was a request for him to have his music played in the courtroom so that the, the judge can understand, you know, the hard life of DMX and, and whatnot? And I was like, who would ask something like that? That's not gonna happen. They played his music in the courtroom. <laughs> not Party Up, they played a song called Slippin' about when your life hits the skids. It's a slow song, life hits, the, there's D. There he is. And this is his, one of his baby's moms who, who, from what I um, was told, her comment on this artist's rendition was, why they make me look white? <laughs> really? Uh, this is what I have to ask you. Why would you have the 15th baby? The, the baby's in the courtroom. Babies shouldn't be in a courtroom. And, and who is this? And, and, if you want real sympathy votes, then why wouldn't you be holding your own baby? I don't, I don't know who this woman is. The baby's right there, the baby's brand new. Uh, DMX cried, but we know he's good for crying. Authentic tears, we saw him on I On The Fix Your Life. Listen, he's, he's got nine kids, excuse me, 15 kids and nine babies' moms. He's 47 years old with a hell of a drug problem. He owes over $2 million in back taxes. This is an incorrigible case. This, he will, in my opinion, this is a person who will never get clean and see the good light of day. They never should have allowed the music in the courtroom because now court system, you're coming off as groupies. You know, which is, it's bad enough that the government is, is out of control in this country, you know. But now the court, your group is you're allowing music into the courtroom. So what does that mean? It, you know, if an artist gets in trouble, that the artist is now allowed to bring their, their artwork in to, sh to express in the courtroom. This is when I, you know, made this for my mother and, and Mother Teresa, this is a rendition of my, it, Mother Teresa. <laughs> no, really, the, the court is supposed to deal with the facts that they have at hand, not be clouded by here and slipping. <laughs> And a baby crying. Nobody needs no babies in a courtroom. So when he gets out, he's gonna end up to, uh, back to the same life. And here's why I say this, uh, you know, and I, he's gonna end up having more kids. He will never be able to pay back that money. 
Because as long as he surrounds himself by the same people who've probably been taking his money all along, I'm not saying, I'm just thinking in my mind. <laughs> Where is DMX gonna get almost $3 million? 2.29, look, the, the interest is gonna add up. It'll be 3 million by the time he gets out. Where is he gonna get $3 million? 15 kids, nine babies, moms. Listen, honey, have we, uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we talked about condoms yesterday, and, and uh, the audience, my co-host, you clapped. I think that the use of condoms is on the decline. I think people talk that talk about condoms, but when the feeling is good and the lights go out, I do believe a, a lot of people are not using condoms anymore. Clap if you see a decline in the use of condoms. It's very, very sad. It's very sad, you know, so D DMX, because, you know, be fruitful and multiply. A lot of times people don't care about how many kids they have. And you know what? Even if you have got all the money in the world, kids require your time. They require time. <laughs> 15 kids. His oldest son, Xavier, is 25. Xavier. I know. Uh, Xavier... To me, out of all the other 14 kids, Xavier to me would be the one to be able to say, look, dad, clean your life up, dad. You know, I'm not going down the same path as you, dad, but I wanna help you with yours, dad. A 25-year-old young man should be able to talk to his father and a father should be able to listen with tears in his eyes, like, damn, I effed up. You know, I, I owe these taxes, um, you know, about this addiction life. I surround myself by bad people. You know, I love all the kids, but I got too many kids and too many babies' moms. You know, thank you, Xavier. You know, help me out. Xavier won't be on the road with him. He's going to be on the road with bloodsuckers. And when he gets out, the same people who he thinks care about him are the same ones to get him the dopest dope. And the same ones to take their cut of the money. So while DMX is trying to figure out how to take care of nine babies' mothers and 15 kids, the hangers-on around him will be hangers-on around him. And I don't think that this is a changeable situation. By the way, girls, when you meet a man and you realize he's got five kids by five babies' moms, <laughs> don't you wanna use condoms, the pill, a sponge? It's not a good look. And I get the excitement of, you know, ooh, he's a rock star. Like this, this willy-nilly girl, uh, show the new baby's mom, the one that said, why they make, here she is. Poor young thing. Her baby is only like this. So he's gonna have nothing left for her. Girl, I hope you have a job <laughs> and, and a way to make it other than saying you're DMX baby's moms, because that is not, to, that's not hot. It's not hot to be DMX baby's mom, except for you, um, uh, Shakira, uh, Tashira, uh, because you, she's the original ride or die. She seems to really hold him down, but you can only hold somebody down but so much if they don't want to hold themselves down. DMX is incorrigible. <laughs> and so, um, Corey Feldman, you know, the attack. Originally, he said he was stabbed with a knife. Well, it turns out he thinks that it was a needle. He, what allegedly happened was on Tuesday night, somewhere around 10 o'clock at night in Los Angeles, a car pulled up next to he, and there were some security people in the car with him. And the security cracked the window and stared, with a, uh, the guys, uh, stared the guys down. Well, first of all, why are you cracking a window and staring people down? That's not what I, that is not what I hire you for. You're hired to keep me safe, so you're not even supposed to be window to window to another car. Even regular people don't, do you window to window? Not me, I, I always er, pull it up a little more, right? Pull it up a little bit more. And if there's no room to pull it up, I've been known to back it up a bit. I'm not lining up windows with you, number one. And then crack a window. Who's cracking windows at 10 something at night anywhere, USA? or around the world. Anyway, so then the security uh, guy apparently gets out, or one of the guys in the car um, next to them gets out and argues with DMX, or, or, um, sorry, I'm getting my, I'm getting, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Corey Feldman's um, security. Why is security getting out of the car and arguing with people? 
And so then there was another guy who came around to Corey's side, opened the door and stabbed him with something, according to what Corey said. And then they fled the scene. Corey drove himself to the hospital. Well, I don't know where security was at that point. Why you, you mean security drove you to the hospital? Uh, TMZ caught the cops in the picture, uh, what, right there, the cops. That's his wife, by the way. Corey Feldman is married, and he's been married for a few years. Um, they, they, they're trying to figure out a puncture wound. If it was a puncture wound, that, uh, that, they, that needle could have been laced with anything. So they're going to do a battery of tests to make sure that he doesn't have anything that it could have been transferred to him. Um, Corey told TMZ that he thinks people are out to get him. I have an opinion. Take a look. It's very odd that a group of Mexican guys would pull over a car, uh, go as far as opening a door and stabbing the person inside, because generally, if they're going to do that kind of an aggressive move, they're going to ask for a wallet at that point. They're going to ask for your car keys. They're going to ask for some kind of demand. Well, at that point, the guy just got back in his car and left. So that sounds pretty uh, direct to me. That sounds like a message. What, that all Mexicans um, pull people over and want something? What's that message? No, I don't think that was a racial thing. I think he was just doing a description. Um, I believe what Corey says about pedophilia in Hollywood. I've believed it since before Corey was talking about it. Um, if you want your children to be part of that Hollywood machine, touch, touch, touch. Not many get away without being touched. I do believe that. And the stories are out there. It's just that Corey and Corey were way before their time talking about it. The two Corey's movie was on Lifetime the other night. I saw it again. I'm like, mm-hmm. I do believe that people want Corey Feldman silenced, though, because now he's taken his, his um, acknowledgement. Instead of just talking to me and you and TMZ, he's now going to Washington. He's been in Washington. He wants Congress to change laws regarding, you know, children, you know, being touched, you know, pedophilia in Hollywood. He's doing the good for the people in a sober way. He's sober. And he's, he's very well spoken about it. It's just that I think that this was just a random ca case of road rage, Corey. I understand him looking over his shoulder all the time thinking that people are out to get him because I'm sure they are. You know, in their own way, like, shut him up. He's now taking this to Congress, you know. But um, I think that this might have been road rage. Anyway, Corey Feldman, um, good luck with your crusade. <laughs> so here's my thought. You shouldn't be allowed to talk about um, your man if you have children together under 21 years old. In the case of, on social media, oh, only one of you heathens agrees? Okay. Because the kids are innocent. You, like, you should not be able, to, Rick Ross wants the courts to shut down his baby's mom's social media. Well, her baby's mom's social media. He, he, wants, her, he, he wants her social media shut down. That's a little extreme. But Rick is claiming that his ex, here she is, Tia Kemp, um, that she's been posting statements that make him look bad as a dad. Well, he might be a bad dad, but we don't need to see that on social media. And certainly the child doesn't need to see that. And we don't need to be all involved in the business. So remember, I'm not saying he's a bad dad. I'm saying he might be a bad dad. But why do we need to know this? Why can't you, Tia, handle this between you and your man and keep this away from the child eventually finding out when the child is old enough? So remember, last year we were here to uh, remind you that um, she posted, couldn't get you to call your son last month to wish him happy birthday. His, 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 his basketball tuition ain't paid yet either, but you got Birdman's bleep in your mouth. <laughs> the point is, is if the tuition wasn't paid, if he didn't see his son for his birthday, that should, be some, that should be an argument between the two of you, either on the phone or up in his neck in his face. That shouldn't be on social media. 
And regarding what you're implying, you know, Rick's relationship with Birdman, whatever, we don't need to see that either because eventually, Tia, your kid is going to get old enough and see this kind of stuff and then your kid might resent you for putting that stuff out there. Sometimes with kids, it becomes a popularity contest of the parents, you know what I mean? Like, Tia, you might think that you're the, the, the good one now because the kid's young, but when that kid discovers Versace <laughs> and, and hot girls and good parties, he's gonna be all about Rick and say, you're the bad mother. I just, and this doesn't just go for celebrities. This is for all people, everybody. I just feel like posting about your kids, um, about your relationship back and forth with each other on social media is not good if you have children under 21, under 21, right? Should be a law. <clears throat> so this Walmart thing with Cosmopolitan, <laughs> Walmart has decided to remove Cosmo, uh, as you've heard, from their checkout aisles. Well, you know, I spend a lot of time in the grocery store, you probably do as well. When you're there with your children, when your children were younger, younger, or maybe you have kids that age right now, you're standing there, you know, unloading your stuff, and your kids are looking, heat up sex. <laughs> what about this one right here? Warm toys for your hot spots. <laughs> Mommy, I love toys. <laughs> Um, look, Cosmo is reflective to me of today's society where whether they're going to see it on the front of Co Cosmo magazine or see it in between commercials on TV or see it from our president's mouth or hear it from, or, or, or hear it from, you know, or hear it from Rick Ross baby's mom or CD. No, I'm just saying these are a few of the things going on that make, you know, society is just like, Walmart, I get, by the way, are you still selling guns? <laughs> when our son was young enough, um, he would see Cosmo magazine, but I would always know before we get in line, He's curious behind. I would take like a People magazine and put it in front of the Cosmo <laughs> so he wouldn't see it. You gotta get more creative with your kids. Taking it out of the, um, the checkout aisle, I don't know what that's going to do. I think that I saw this invention. Um, show that invention. You could put like, and I think a sleeve is corny, but this right here, it's made of hard plastic. You see it's Cosmopolitan magazine, but you put Cosmo, keep it at the checkout line, but keep it like this. As opposed to putting it way in the back of the grocery store. I'm sure the people at Cosmopolitan are pissed because that means sales are gonna go down. Most people read online anyway. I only get it once a year when they do the bedside astrologer. <laughs> <laughs> Comes out in January. But, uh, but um, clap if you feel that, that um, Cosmo should not be at the checkout aisle. <laughs> you're weak, you're weak. You're, no, no, you're very, very weak. You waited and your friend saw it. She waited. You were like this and you waited for other people to clap. You are not my people. Weak. Uh-uh. People who are my co-hosts stand in their own truth even when other people are judging. That's not you. Get out. <laughs> Listen, we got more great show for you. You know who's here? Music manager and author and Beyonce's father. Matthew Knowles is here, so grab a snack and come on back. created one of the most successful girl group of all time, Destiny's Child. His daughter, Beyonce.
Beyonce and also Solange are Grammy award-winning music superstars. He's got a new book. It's called Racism from the Eyes of a Child. Please welcome for the first time to our show, Dr. Yes, Dr. Oh. Matthew Knowles. <laughs> Um, hello. Hello. It's about time. I know. You know, you don't remember 1998 in Miami. Okay. And the girls were there and they were just kind of breaking. And you were getting interviews. And I remember our publicist say, you know, that young lady is wanting to get an interview and nobody will allow her to get interviews. I don't know if you remember this. Oh, yes. It's, uh, it's tough being Wendy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I Sometimes said, people get scared. Certainly we're going to give her an interview. And I, I don't know if you remember this. I said, Wendy, one day I'm going to ask you for a favor. And here I am. Oh, see? <laughs> see? So I want to give you some Matthew Knowles shoe cam. You put your feet on those feet and model them right there. Matthew, I have to say, in person, you are everything I thought you'd be. A cat daddy, right? Yeah! You're a nice looking man. Well, thank you. Yeah, so um, Beyonce and Solange are musical superstars. Yeah. Are you? Can I get comfortable? Yes. Yeah, I got okay. long legs. I don't know if it's Me too. Work. No, go ahead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see there? Don't That's crush the there. family jewels. <laughs> <laughs> just, just... That's right. I just sit like this. Okay, okay. Uh, they're musical superstars, though. <laughs> um, Everybody's excited. Are you in awe of your girls when you sit back? You know, are you in awe? Well, you know, for years I played a dual role as manager and as father. Yes. Uh, today I play the role, I don't play the role, I actually live the role, 100% as their father. Nice. And... I'm extremely proud of them. Yes. Not, not what, just what they've done professionally, but how they've lived their life off the stage and they, been role models very, for Very them. quiet, very right. private, never anything seedy. But you're the same man who taught Beyonce and the girls how to run in heels. It's kind Brilliant. of difficult, isn't it? Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> and, and all the things, all of the curtsying, all the, you know, all the mannerisms, everything that it would take a young lady to blossom into becoming Beyonce. Did you know... <laughs> did you know while um, you went through several incarnations, Farrah and the other girls, you know, being in the, in the group, did you know that you would always want your daughter to be the breakout star? No, not really. Lies you tell. No, 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 no. Nope. No. You gotta remember that we, I actually came up with this strategy. Okay. That the last three albums, and the, the ladies bought into it, obviously they mm -hmm. had to buy into it, but the last three albums of Destiny's Child, each one of the ladies had solo projects. Uh -huh. So they had two. Uh, Michelle has had three number one albums, three consistent. Bless her heart. Number one albums. Good for her. And you can do no better than number one, yes, right? Yes, yes. In the gospel genre. In the gospel genre. Uh -huh. that's, that's her, and, her and belief. Kelly and Kelly and Beyonce are still very close. They're extremely close. Kelly sold four or five million records outside of America because she's done quite well outside. It's the 20th anniversary of Destiny's Child ever being invented. The, their first album came out 20 years ago. I can't believe it's been that long. How... Um, I can't either. I, 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 right? Yeah. Um, do you think that they'll ever get back together? Well, I'm hopeful that they will. I, 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 I think we all will like that, right? Okay. I'm going to tell you when it's going to happen. You mark my words. It's not going to happen at Coachella. You know, it's not going to happen at Coachella. Save your time. It's going to happen when Beyonce and Jay-Z are on the road. Because people really want to see Beyonce. A lot of people are, eh, regarding Jay-Z. A lot of people also feel that they're, all they're going to get is the On The Run tour remixed and repackaged and, you know, for a lot of money for the tickets, Matthew. The only way they could really twist it and make it interesting, and you say, <clears throat> is to reunite Destiny's Child. Mark my words. That's all. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> you know? So. Do you talk to Beyonce about things like this? Well, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I, we don't talk about that, but I still manage. Every day, work day, I have to do something, license Destiny's Child music around the world or something. 
because uh, you own all, all the destiny. Well, I'm still a manager, and as a manager, I have to approve all of these things. Oh. Uh, and, and so I would know, though, if they were going to get together. I don't want, I hope they don't just get together and do two or three songs. I want them to do a, a complete tour together. Yeah. So what if they all of a sudden hopped up on stage during the On The Run tour and just started singing? As a manager, what are you going to do? Swoop in? Mm, I think they're on the run. On the run, on the run. <laughs> That's smart, so you own... Now, do you and Tina own it split? Because she worked hard on the clothing and the hair and you worked hard on the discipline and the other things. You had a very good job, from what I understand, um, as a techie. And you left your job to be full-time devotion to these girls and what could be. What a gamble. Well, if you're going to be committed, you have to be 100%. You know that better than anyone. Yeah. Does Tina own part also? Of uh, the domain? Trademark? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. That's all you. So you're still getting paid. I still work. Yes, you do. <laughs> How old are you, by the way? 66 years old. 66. Wait, 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 wait. I have to ask you this. So did your makeup person do a good job? Am I oily today? No, you're not oily. No, you, no, you're not. No, let me see. Oh, let me please. Look. Let me look. Don't hang me out to oil. Okay. You know the picture that we show of Matthew, and, and Matthew, you're always in need of some press powder, but no, not today. <laughs> Good. And, and by the way, <laughs> and, and by the way, in case you didn't tell, in case you couldn't tell, this show is done with a bit of seriousness, but a whole lot of tongue in cheek. But also a whole lot of love from your staff. Th thank you, and thank you, thank you, and 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 my co-host. And, um, but you're the one who reached out to us calling the Bureau, trying to set things straight. So now Norman's got the first line to Matthew and Matthew's got a first line to Norman in the Bureau. So we consider you an offshoot of the show. Well, good. Yeah. So if you see something, say something. All right. All right. So Matthew's got Beyonce and Solange, but he's also got four grandchildren. Wow. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's Jules. And who's the other one? Oh, that's Solange. Looking just like Jules, okay? <laughs> and then there's um, um, Blue Ivy, mm -hmm. and then Beyonce's got the twins, so you got four grandchildren. What's your relationship like with the grandchildren, Matthew? Well, you know, I've spent four or five times with them. You know, I live in Houston. Um, Beyonce is and Jay are living mainly a lot in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and sometimes here. Mm -hmm. uh, when I get a chance, I get a chance to meet them here. But I always say, uh, even with Beyonce and, and Solange, when you're three years and younger, uh -huh. like, uh, I want you to talk when I say hello. I like to hear you say hi back. Uh, so, so I can't wait till they get to that age that uh, we can hang out. A lot of people out. do feel that way, but they're too embarrassed to admit it. I appreciate your honesty. So you have a better relationship with Jewel because Jewel does stuff. Well, Jewel is a basketball. Jewel. He's a b-baller. Uh -huh. uh, and I played high school and college ball, and, mm -hmm. and I, we get to talk about basketball. He's a teenager, believe it or not. Now he's 13 years old. Really? And so he's going through the transition that 13 year old boys go. Yeah. And I love this man and will spend more time with him because uh, he's a great kid. Yeah, yeah. And now, when the twins were born, when Beyonce gave birth to the twins, it was, it was Matthew who put it out, or excuse me, yes, Matthew put it out there before anybody else did, including the family. Yeah, yeah. Was I, she pissed? I, I, I have to say. I was, uh, I, I, I'll never forget this. I was on my way to the airport. Uh -huh. I think it was one of those Saturday good morning shows. Uh -huh. And I uh, thought the sc scroll said, Beyonce has announced, and I was just rushing. And when I got to the airport, uh -huh. I just wanted to congratulate her because uh -huh. I thought she had told the world because I knew and a lot of people knew and uh -huh. close to the family. It was a mistake that I made. Uh, oh. And I can own that. That was a, a mistake. I but apologize. your mistakes are our game because we talked about it before she even announced it. Yeah. Thank well. you. <laughs> you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. It, look, Matthew, it does happen. Yeah. Um, Beyonce's a very, very private person, though. Uh, when you saw Beyonce, Solange, and Jay-Z and, and the security in the elevator uh, thumping, what was your reaction to that? I, I have to tell you, I laughed so hard. <laughs> Be, I laugh so hard because, you know, if you know Solange, that's Solange. That's Solange. You just never know a what you're going to get. Firecracker. Don't know where she get that from. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I, then Beyonce would be in the corner, quiet, just kind of like, when y'all finish, let me know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I just laughed. Laughed. 
Next, we've got more with Matthew Knowles. Keep it here. I will admit it. So, Matthew, everybody, is married. Married. You've been married for a few years now, huh? Uh, most people don't even know I'm, I've been married. It'll be five years in a few months. Well, this is why you're here. It's yeah. show business. So, you've got to show your business. So, you're five years now. Do you have children with your, with your wife? No, no. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations on the new book. I thought it would be something regarding Destiny's Child. But instead of writing that book, you wrote a book that's actually quite interesting. Racism from the eyes of a child. Tell us about the book and your humble beginnings in Alabama and what brought you here now. Yeah, well, you know, I grew up in Gaston, Alabama. I was born in 1952 uh, in a little small town of 25,000 people in Gaston. Um, it was an era of racism and segregation. George Wallace was our governor. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about our family history, our heritage. Were you raised by mom and dad? I was. Okay. I was raised, raised by my mo and, mother and father. And why did they pick you to be one of the bus students? Because you were bussed in? To... Well, they had freedom of choice. It oh, was okay. one of the new laws that they had just in 1956, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, that freedom of choice came about. And so parents could decide where they wanted their kids to go. Uh, the unwritten rule was, okay, if you send your, your, your kid over to the white school, we're not going to protect you. Uh, did so, you get beat up? Yes, I did. Oh. I got a lot of demonstrations we did during that era. Uh, and I hear that you also went to uh, uh, yeah, experience uh, some of majority, that. At the time, Ocean Township High School was majority white. And, yeah. uh, you know, I experienced things, but nothing like being hosed down. Yeah. I mean, it was tough. And in the, in the, yeah. we're talking in the early 60s. Yeah. Uh, it was very difficult. Uh, and as a result, I heard through the book that your own mother said to you, don't bring home any dark-skinned girls. She did, and, and that was wrong. It was wrong. the era of the time. It, that was wrong, and, but she did a lot of great things, but that one was wrong. And I internalized that as a kid. You know, what we hear as children, we sometimes internalize that, and it affects us in our adult life. And so then there, you chose Tina. I chose Tina. Yeah. Is your wife now, is she... Light skin, dark skin, in between? She's beautiful. Okay. We'll get to digging. We'll, we'll find out. How about that? Uh, uh, one thing that sparked a lot of conversation here at answer. Wendy. Hmm. <laughs> one thing that sparked a lot of conversation here is, at Wendy is that you said, Matthew, something to the effect of if Beyonce, uh, Beyonce wouldn't be successful if she was dark skin. No, I never said that. Okay. Clarify. Look in the book, I don't even say Beyonce's name. What I said was, is that in pop radio, and that's, you know this, there's different types of radio. Mm -hmm. There's urban radio, adult contemporary, but pop radio, specifically <laughs> pop radio. Side by side with Taylor Swift. That mm -hmm. if you look over the last history of years, mm -hmm. and I had my students at Texas Southern to research this, mm -hmm. that- Where he's a professor, by the way. For eight years, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, that that you would see that those black females that are at pop radio of a lighter complexion. That's a fact. That's, that's, you can't go past that at all. Do you all. feel as though it's still going on now? It is, yes. To the point where girls are bleaching their skin and, you know, changing the color of their eyes and things like that? Well, all around the world that, that's happening, not just in America. Yeah. It still happens. It's unfortunate. Did you encourage Beyonce to stay out of the sun while the other girls in the group darkened up so that Beyonce could be the lightest one? Well, we're actually waiting for you to be the fourth member. Oh. I would, but I can't dance. I'm not good in heels. Well, we can work on that. <laughs> I'm comfortable right here on the couch talking to you. <laughs> so it's been 31 years since you and, or 31 years of great times together, you and Tina, um, but then you got divorced. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your relationship with Beyonce and Solange? Well, it becomes difficult when you're a family that's been together that long. Mm -hmm. No, but fortunately, Beyonce and, and Solange, they were adults. They yeah. weren't kids. You know, it affects kids differently. Solange when, is married. Beyonce's and married. Yeah, they, they have got, their own families. Yeah. They're working on all yeah. that. Uh, so it was, it was all, they, they're, they're ladies. They're yes. women. So 
it's dad and mom, and that's difficult. But, you know, I have to say, Tina is my friend. Nice. She's my friend. And her new husband is hot, well, like you. But I'm known, she knows how to pick him. But I, I knew Richard before Tina knew Richard. Oh. So I've known Richard for a, a while. I, his wow. sister was a good friend of mine. So, wow. You know, she's deceased now, but. Oh. You know. I liked meeting you. Why? Because. Why? Because I do. Do people so recognize you? So you invite me a, a back again? Call the bureau and book yourself. You know our number. <laughs> <laughs> you all the time you know what they say is wow I didn't know you look like that I didn't know you were tall I didn't know it was that handsome from the eyes of a child. This is stores now. Everyone in the studio audience is going home with their copy. And we'll be right back.